Hello, George Romanic here. In today's video, we are going to study Irving's formula of evaporation. We will look into fabulous arguments that Irving Langmuir made to estimate the rate of evaporation of water. We will heavily use some of the results that I derived in my playlist on kinetic theory of gases because his arguments are purely based on that theory. And then towards the end of the video, we will also see that the results are not as good as the fabulous arguments that he made. We will use the result from my video on collision frequency between atoms and a wall, such as this wall over here. You will remember that we derived formula that dn dt is equal p divided by square root 2 pi k m t where n is the number of particles that is hitting unit area of wall in time t. p is pressure in the gas. pi, if you don't know what the pi is, then close the video and just go and watch some beauty bloggers. k is Boltzmann constant. m is mass of these atoms or molecules. We can call them particles. And t is absolute temperature. So, just to remind you, if we have a wall like, like so, and then uh, we have some atoms colliding with this wall, this formula gives us dn dt, number of atoms colliding with unit area of this wall in time t. Now, what Irving Langmuir said is the following. First, imagine these atoms are molecules of water vapor, and that's not so difficult to imagine. So, this is water vapor in the air. Now, this is liquid water. And this is surface of liquid water. First, Langmuir said any molecule of water vapor that hits liquid water will become liquid water. Namely, none of them will bounce off. Each of them passing this surface will become liquid water, which means efficiency of condensation is one. This is already assumption because indeed, in reality, some of these molecules of water vapor might bounce off of surface of the water. He said none of them. Everything that touches water becomes water. Well, that means the following. I can multiply this equation by m. And m is constant. Water is not radioactive, so we are not losing mass. And then I will get that d m n dt is equal. I also have m here. So I will get here, I will put p here, so I will get m, square root rather, m divided by 2 pi kt. But m times n is the flux, mass flux of these water vapor molecules hitting the surface of the water. So I will call this quantity dmc. C, because I will say that all of these are condensing, as I just made this argument. So, mass of conden flux mass of water vapor molecules that are condensing is e this, and that is equal P square root M divided by 2 pi kT. So, that's the first part of the story that Irving Langmuir proposed. And that basically means we dealt with the air. But now, more difficult part, how do we deal with liquid water? Because we said in previous videos that uh, some of the molecules will escape liquid water and become vapor, become gas. So, how do we estimate rate of evaporation? Irwin Langmuir said, well, I don't know if he said all these things. I'm making it up. I'm making it like a story. He said, I will 
assume that liquid water is gas saturated with water vapor. So, and not any gas, but pure water vapor, okay? Pure water vapor. Well, in that case, you can see that one can use this same formula to calculate dME, rate of evaporation, in time is equal P, but not P, but PS. PS, because gas is saturated with water vapor, and then times mass of water vapor molecules divided by 2 pi kT. Now, if we subtract these two equations, what I will get is that dMe dt minus dmc dt, and I will just call that dm dt, is equal ps minus p square root m divided by 2 pi kt. We know from my previous videos that in atmospheric sciences, in general, in physics, we call water vapor pressure of, of water vapor E, we use E, and saturation pressure of water vapor we write as ES. This is just identically equal. These are conventions that we use. Well, with that in mind, we can write that dm dt is equal ES minus E, square root m divided 2 pi kt. And this is beautiful Langmuir's formula for the rate of evaporation. It is very, very simple argument. Of course, if you didn't watch my video on collision frequency between atoms or molecules and a wall, then you don't understand anything, but you can watch that video where I derive this formula explicitly. We can see if ES is larger than E, we will have net rate of, uh, so dm dt will be positive, and that means evaporation is larger than condensation. We also see here if, if ES is smaller than E, that means dm dt is smaller than zero, and that means condensation is larger than evaporation. But I would like you, I wrote it explicitly, but this is not feasible solution, because ES cannot be smaller than E. That's the basic premise of the definition of ES. So, mathematically, this makes sense, but physically, you have to understand, this doesn't make sense. What does make sense is if ES is equal E, that means that dm dt is equal zero, and that means, means what? Means equilibrium, which we defined in one of my previous videos. Okay, that's Irwin Langmuir's formula. Now let us look why this formula doesn't work very well. First of all, if we have a surface of the water here and we have some water vapor molecules over here, quite often we will have wind. And that wind significantly increases the rate of evaporation significantly. That's called ventilation effect. But this formula doesn't take into account this. Formula doesn't take into account that, as I said earlier, some of these molecules of water vapor can bounce off the surface of the water. 
third problem with the formula is that liquid water that is sitting here is not gas. If liquid water was gas, kinetic theory of gases would apply to it, but it doesn't apply because water, liquid water molecules are really close together on top of each other, rolling like... Uh, well, rolling on top of each other, like rocks that are rolling on top of each other. And when they are so close together, electrical forces become so important, actually become more important than mechanical bouncing between two molecules. So exchange of momentum and any other property is mostly carried out through electromagnetic interaction rather than bouncing. So none of this is accounted for in, in uh, Irwin's argument, but very importantly, what is not accounted is the following. Let us assume that liquid water can be assumed as a saturated pure water vapor gas. What is not assumed is the following. You see, if you look, now this is height, z-axis. If you look above surface of the water, there are layers of air. Let's say this is layer 1, this is layer 2, this is layer 3, so layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. Most water vapor is situated right here next to the liquid water and then a little bit less over here and then even less in this layer over here. If I introduce layer number four, then even less water vapor is here. So you see there is this stratification of water vapor density that is not accounted for in the formula and this stratification changes the rate of condensation as well as consequently rate of evaporation. And uh, some research suggests that, it, now you will laugh, that uh, Langmuir's formula is uh, good to a factor of 100,000 or sometimes even to a million or so. So whatever you calculate with Langmuir's formula, you have to adjust it for this factor over here, and therefore you would say, wow, this is a horrible result. Probably, but the argument that he made is very, very good. Uh, if you want to read more about it, you can look uh, Frank John's book. It's a very nice book, everything about water, and you will appreciate how complicated is really to estimate the rate of evaporation and condensation of liquid. Until next video, goodbye.